first question is going to come from the line of Steve Julian. Steve, your line is now live. All right, thank you, sir. And I have just one question for Mr. Nelson, and then I'll get off the line. Roy, you've had such a legendary career already. So many great fights, so many accomplishments. If things don't go your way on Friday night, is this it for you, or do you keep on keeping on? Uh, you know what? I, I, it's one of those uh, things. Um, you know, as long as I'm competitive, I, I'm, I'm okay with however, because, uh, I mean, I know where I, st I stand in the whole heavyweight division in the world from UFC, from Bellator to 1FC to the whole nine yards. So as long as I'm competitive, um, I keep doing what I'm doing. All right, thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Giancarlo Alino. Giancarlo, your line is now live. Hi, Roy. Uh, you competed on The Ultimate Fighter before, and you might have that experience now of uh, not competing with too many people in attendance. Uh, does that give you the advantage, you think, coming into this fight? Um, I think it gives um, – the advantage is definitely uh, changes the, your fight style because you're not going out there and um, making sure you're pleasing the fans. Uh, so you're just kind of going out there and just, you know, getting a W any way you know how. Uh, I think that's the difference between when you're playing with fans live, you're, you know, it's like a rock and roll concert. You got to make sure everybody's happy. And how does that affect a fighter? Like you've been around this sport a long time. Uh, having no fans, does that really take a toll on a fighter or is it just that it allows you to hear a corner more and helps you? Um, I think having no uh, fans just makes it a little bit easier on what the, um, the plan is, the game plan. Like, uh, when you have fans, you, you, you're, you kind of shift to, towards, uh, making the fans happy when you're here live. So, I mean, that's the only difference versus like your game plan changes. Uh, you can stick to a game plan better. Thank you very much. And best of luck on Friday. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of John Eric Poli. John, your line is now live. Hi, Roy. I wanted to back up, you know, to two weeks ago, we saw Tim Johnson get a big win over Matt Mitrione and you were celebrating on Instagram. Uh, you were very happy, happy for your teammate there. Can you just put it into words, though, just how proud you were of him? Uh, you know, I, I was I was living vicariously through uh, Tim because uh, I've been asking for the Matt fight. I've been asking for a check. I've been asking for a lot of guys and I, you know, I just take fights with whatever I get. Uh, so that that fight was just one of those uh you know kind of just marks cuz just telling Tim exactly how to beat him and what to how to basically just get the job done and you know Tim executed a game plan that was flawless besides a little headbutt you know yeah, you know, I wanted to touch on that, too, because he said that in his post fight that you were very helpful to him during training camp. Uh, now, for this training camp for you, is Tim helpful to you just like you were to him? Um, I didn't really have Tim uh, this uh, training camp just besides the um, I think we made it work specifically for me, like because this was a short notice fight for me. So uh, not really because we're, you know, more for Tim, 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 Tim. And then uh, Tim actually had a fight. And then when he got back, he wasn't really, he came back, uh, I think the last, so I got like maybe one good sparring session with him. And then just the last thing for me then, um, a few years ago, I was in Vegas and I stopped by Flay Mayweather's gym just to see it. And you were in there doing some boxing training. So I was wondering, do you still go over to Mayweather's and uh, how have they helped you out three, uh, helped you through your career? Uh, throughout my career, uh, you know, working out at Floyd's or Bones's, um, uh, you know, I, I pretty much I go I go over where I can find uh, good work. So uh, anywhere I can find good work and uh, work with good people, that's where I'll go. Thanks. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. All right. Our next question comes from the line of Jay Anderson. Jay, your line is now live. Thanks very much, and welcome back, Roy. I wanted to ask, at 44, what's the biggest difference in your training today from, say, 10 years ago? Um, 10 years ago, the difference is, is uh, not being able to find a gym now. I mean, this this at 44, there's a pandemic, so finding a gym is really hard now. Back then, you could find a gym uh, just through a rock. All right, now, if you do get past Moldovsky, I mean, would you be interested in being one of Fedor's uh, final opponents. 
I, uh, you know what? I've always wanted to fight Fedor. Um, but you know, I think, uh, if I get past uh, Moldovsky or when I do, um, I think it's time for me to actually p start picking uh, who I want to fight versus, you know, just taking whoever they give me. And last one for me, you talked about, you know, having the fans there, you kind of feel that pressure to put on a show. You've always been a guy who likes to entertain, though. Is that a, a change in mindset that you've had now where you've got to start looking out for yourself more? Uh, no, anytime I, I've always, you know, cause the fans are the ones that pays the bills, but it's just different when it's live cause they're not paying the bills now they're, it's the, now it's TV stuff. So it's a little bit different. Now you just go out there and put on a show. Um, but you just go out and win and then that's all that matters because that's all the network matters. All right. Thanks very much. Best of luck this Friday. All right. Our next question comes from the line of Arkady Sakovsky. Arkady, your line is now live. Hi, Roy. How are you? Good. Greetings from Israel. Um, my question is, um, you are a knockout artist. You prefer to stand and, and bang uh, in the phone booth, but uh, the, a lot of people don't know and maybe don't remember that you're an excellent grappler. Uh, will we see the grappler? Um, you know what? I... I'm hoping uh, we'll, we'll see uh, see all my versatile tool belt um, skills that I have uh, in this fight, just because uh, that's what my coaches want to see. So I have to give them what you know. They're the only ones. They're my now the fans that I have that are in my corner. If anybody wants to hear how good your grappling is, they should hear uh, Rampage's commentary on the Ultimate Fighter after uh, your win against uh, the late, great uh, Kimbo Slice. Of, of course. <laughs> Good luck to you, Roy. Uh, wish you well and hope uh, that you win and maybe we'll see you fight for the title. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Dimitri Kagan. Dimitri, your line is now live. Hey, Roy, you spoke about picking your opponents. Um, with Valentin being a up-and-comer, you know, he's got an impressive record. Um, do you feel like he was not worthy of fighting you, or it, would you have just rather fought somebody else? Um, and how do you feel about fighting him? Have you studied no. him? No, uh, fighting, you know, Valentin, I, you know, I'm, all, I'm always gracious of, you know, being able to fight, you know, whoever, and especially up-and-comers, you know, the whole night. It's just... Throughout my whole career, I've never actually picked a fighter, like, you know, pick a fight where, um, but there's fights that are on my, that are on my radar that I actually wanted, um, that it just never came to f fruition just because, you know, like whatever politics are or not politics or how the game is played, but it's just, um, I, there's just fights that I, I want and there's people I just want to beat up and, and that's, <laughs> what it is we're in the fight game i fully understand you've been around the block i mean you deserved it um if you had your number one pick who would be your number one pick or your top three i uh, you know like they're like fedor's number like just like one of those legacy ones but then uh like a matt matriel is just i just want to beat him up and just make some money like that's just like a, a who's the there. third one you got you can't pick two it's either one or three <laughs> Uh, one or three. That's I gave you two, and then uh, Czech Kong would be another because you know, awesome. Czech's, Czech's right now, right there on the um, he just fought for the belt last, so and then I'd like to give him the chance to uh, knock me out now. Our next question comes from the line of Sergio Pinero. Sergio, your line is now live. And it's not live, Sergio. You there? All right, we're going to move on to Kevin Shajin. Kevin, your line is now live. Hey, Roy, Roy Big Country, how are we doing? Good. All right, Roy, you've had a long career. Uh, given the length and success of your career so far, what goal are you most proud of, and what else do you want to accomplish in your career before you retire? Uh, you know, the... I mean, I, I'm still just, you know, plugging away and doing what I want to do. And um, right now, the it's still the 
it's still for the, you know, the belt or belt. And then once I fight for the belt and then win it, and then I can just go, here you go and have it back. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good after that. Um, it's just, uh, that's that, as long as I'm competitive, that's, that, that's kind of how I, you know, I see this fight game because I just do what I love. All right. Last question for me is listen, you know, Valentine's an up and come. We all, we, it's been mentioned, but how much forward do you look to be playing spoiler party for this uh, fight? Um, I, I love playing the spoiler party because I like to say, you know, F you to everybody. <laughs> all right well thank you roy uh good luck i hope to see a good old-fashioned big country knockout all right i appreciate it thank you all right our next question comes from the line of alex behunin alex your line is now live hi roy um last weekend the conversation uh was all about steep and dc and that they, that they are the best two heavyweights of all time i think people forget that you fought both of them back to back um, do you have somebody on the top of your head who's the best heavyweight of all time? Best heavyweight of all time depends on like what uh, I guess. I think it's styles and matchups because uh, in the heavyweight division, uh, it's literally it takes only one punch. I mean, you had Francis fight uh, uh, was it Jocko last week uh, with uh, Junior? Uh, Francis fought fought. Uh, is that his name? Was it the um, you guys are no help over there because you guys don't watch the UFC. You don't watch MMA. Never seen it. <laughs> uh, but no, the um, it just heavyweight division. Just you know, one one punch can definitely change. So the, like heavyweight can literally just change. I mean, you have like somebody that probably like um, like Stefan Struve would probably beat Stipe again. Like just because of just the reach and just it's just a style matchup. I mean, no one ever would go, well, who knocked out Stipe on oh, and be like, oh, it was Stefan Struve. You know what I mean? So it in the heavyweight division, it's it's a big big change of like how like the games played, um, especially unless they're um, more athletic and then all they're doing is just playing tag and they're not really fighting. All right, our next question is going to come from the line of Jay Anderson. Jay, your line is now live. Oh, hey, thanks. Um, just a follow-up, Roy. I know you talked about, uh, you know, when I asked what's the difference between 44 and 34, the, the lack of gym availability. How difficult has the quarantine been on you in terms of getting the training you need? I know this is short notice, but you've got those extra restrictions. Oh, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's hard to... Um... To grapple with a mask on and a plastic bag you know all that all that it, it's just the, this whole pandemic thing is uh definitely a um I, I just wish it wasn't a political year and then maybe we wouldn't be talking about this fair enough thanks all right and our last question here is going to come from the line of sergio panero sergio are you there Sergio, can you hear us? All right. All right. Well, that does it. Roy, thank you very much for the time. Up next, we have Julia.